Hey, good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to Gene Autry Park in Mesa. Todd Garbison for Southwest Sports Network. It's play-by-play -play coverage in the 2013 Cleats Classic Invitational. It's a quarterfinal matchup, and it features the number two seed, Saguaro Sabercats, and the number seven seed, Williamsfield Blackhawks. And Williamsfield, the visitors by way of the higher seed, and or the lower seed, rather. And so it's Brady Alexander leading off, and he hits a fly ball out to left field. That's playable out there, and the catch is made. And there's one down. So Williamsfield, the number seven seed, had to win a game earlier today, a 10-0 uh, win over the number 10 seed, Arcadia Titans. And that's how the Blackhawks advance. Saguaro, by way of the number two seed, got a bye in the first round. The winner will advance to play in the semifinals tomorrow at four. And now Jed Fagg, the number two hitter for the Blackhawks, takes for ball one. Stephen Gifford, the starting pitcher today for the Sabercats, who come in with a record of six and six, and a fly ball into shallow center field. And that falls for a base hit, and Jed Fagg aboard, a one-out single. And he's on at first base for Skylar Wingert. And we saw Williams Field earlier in the tournament when they played over at Arcadia. And they had been swinging the bats pretty well. They went to 2-0 and on Monday and then lost a couple of one-run ball games yesterday. And the first pitch to Wingert high for ball one. So it's Alexander leading off in center field. Jed Fagg second at shortstop. Skyler Wingert at first base hits third. Jackson Fagg, the left fielder, is fourth. Connor Mathers at third base, Matt's fifth. The number six hitter is the catcher, Chris Kovar. And the pitch is high, and it's 2-0. And, oh. and then a bottom third of the order, Brandon Amenta, the second baseman. Jake Willock, the DH. And Dallin Milius in right field rounds out the order. The 2-0 -oh pitch. High and outside, three and zero. Oh. Bright sunny day here in Mesa, especially based on how this tournament started off, which was uh, a rainout, complete rainout on Saturday. Not a single game played in the tournament, and then that stacked up the rest as all the teams had to play two games on Monday and two games yesterday. A 3-1 pitch is inside, and that's ball four. So Jed Fagg to second base. Skylar Wingard at first, and the batter is Jackson Fagg. Get to the defense for the Saguaro Sabercats. Michael Bloom starts in left field. Luke Ixty is in center field, and JT Nettleton plays right. Shane Standersbury is at third. Turner Lace the shortstop. Ben Lagusis at second, and Matt Mara plays first. Brent Adams catching Stephen Gifford. And the pitch to Fag over for a strike. Two aboard, one out just underway as we get settled in here in a quarterfinal game in the Cleats Classic Invitational. The one strike pitch. And a breaking ball is just inside, and it's one and one. Got to two of the other quarterfinal games going on here as Gifford misses outside, and it's two balls and a strike. Number 11, IMG Academy out of Bradenton, Florida, taking on number three, Tucson. And number eight, Notre Dame, facing number one seed, Desert Mountain. As the count goes to three and one. Desert Mountain got the number one seed. They went four and oh. Man, Saguaro also four and oh. The only two teams to go undefeated in uh, pool play. But by way of the runs allowed, as it pulls fouled off. By the way, it runs allowed. Desert Mountain gets the number one seed. The Wolves allowed just five runs in four games on their way to the 4-0 record. Saguaro 4-0. They allowed 15. And a ball popped up. And that'll get uh, just out of the reach of Adams, the catcher. Two aboard, one out, top of the first inning. Now Gifford with a 
And a line drive and a base hit over the head of the first baseman. Merritt down the line into right field. Nettleton has it as a runner will come around to score. The throw into the middle of the diamond. And it's an RBI base hit for Jackson Fagg. So Jed Fagg scores. Scott Arwing gets to third. And a timeout from the Sabercat dugout. In the top of the first, Williamsfield has a run. Now Connor Mathers for Williamsfield as he takes a pitch up and in for ball one. Well, a heavy left-handed hitting lineup for Williamsfield, and so Saguaro counters with a left-hand starter. And that pitch over for a strike, and it's one and one. Williamsfield with a run here on a couple of base hits and a walk. The one-one pitch. And this one grounded out towards second base. The flip to second. And on to first base, and Saguaro turns a double play. 4-6-3 double play ends the inning. Williamsfield gets a run on two hits. They leave one, and after a half inning of play, it's the Blackhawks one, and the Sabercats coming up. Nice pitch, Travis. Ben Lagusis leads off for Saguaro in the bottom of the first inning, and he takes strike one. Lagusis has provided a little spark for the Sabercats this tournament. As he takes the next one outside, and it's one and one. Travis Rowe called on to start for Williamsfield. And a ground ball up the middle, backhanded and bobbled, and safe at first base is Lagusis. That was going to be kind of a do-or-die play there for the second baseman, Brandon Amenta, not able to get it clean, and as a result, then Lagusis aborted first. Now Shane Stansberry for the Sabercats. He shows bunt and takes a pitch high for ball one. Sabercats down one nothing, batting in the bottom of the first. The bunt on again and the pitch is outside, 2-0. Oh. So it's Lagusis leading off. Stansbury batting second. Turner Lace is third for Saguaro. Brad Adams will bat fourth. Matt Mira, the first baseman, is fifth. And the bunt down this time, fielded by Rowe. And the throw on to first base is in time. A 1 4 sacrifice retires Stansbury as Lagusis goes to second base. So with Lagusis in scoring position, the batter is Turner Lace. And Lace with a swing and a miss for strike one. The defense for Williamsfield. Actually, let me get through the rest of the Sabercat lineup. I mentioned Ixty hitting sixth. Michael Bloom is seventh. Jack Jeffries, the DH today, batting eighth and hitting for Gifford. And then JT Nettleton rounds out the order. And a breaking ball. That's over for a strike, and it's 0-2. The uh, Williamsfield defense, Jackson Fagg in left, Alexander in center, Milius in right, Mathers at third, Jed Fagg the shortstop, Amenta at second, Wingard at first, and Cobar catching for Travis Rowe. Place down on the count 0-2, and it puts the ball in play, and a soft hit ground ball. That's picked up over there, and uh, Fagg's throw to first base is in time, so Lace grounds out 6-3. Well, he's just got a decent read, though, on a slow hit ground ball and was able to advance to third. Salagoose is at third base with two outs and the batter Brent Adams. And the first one to Adams is a strike. The 0 1. And a breaking ball over for a strike. And it's nothing in two. 
So Oro down one nothing as they bat in the bottom of the first inning. And the two-strike pitch. And a ground ball over on the left side. Picked up in the hole. It's short. The throw on to first base. Not in time, and it gets away. And the run is in. It'll be an infield base hit for Brett Adams. And an RBI as Lagusa scores, and we're tied at one in the bottom of the first. So Saguaro without a ball uh, out of the infield. They manufacture a run, an infield single for Lagusis. He went to second on a sacrifice, went to third on a ground ball, and scores on an infield hit. And a throw to first base. And uh, time called as the runner diving back over there at first base. Maybe scraped up a knuckle or something. I'm going to wait and see here. They're going to, yeah, I guess he'll stay in. Matt Mara at the plate for the Sabercats. 1 1 ball game in the bottom of the first inning. Quarterfinal ball game in the Cleats Classic Invitational. And the first one of Mara misses. It. No, I beg your pardon, at the knees for a strike. And the next pitch, a little bit high for a ball, and it's one and one. Row sets, and the pitch. And a breaking ball bounced in there, and it's two and one. goes the pitch outside and the throw to second base that's going to sail and go into center field and the Sabercats are going to get a runner moved up a base so a stolen base and then an E2 and the Sabercats have a run 90 feet away in a 1-1 ball game in the bottom of the first Pitch is high, and that's ball four. Saber can't put runners at first and third with two outs, and the batter is Luke Eigsty. D with a swing and a foul ball. And that's strike one. There was a courtesy runner in there, Nick Lebroni, running at third base for Adams. He came in, and he was the one that uh, maybe banged up a knuckle or something early. As well, that pitch is over in a uh, called strike, I believe, and it's 0-2. May have been Ike's D offering, but I didn't see that he played umpire point at him. First and third with two outs, a run in for Saguaro. And the 0-2. And that's fouled off. Mara got a good jump over there at first base. But of course, he has got to protect with two strikes. Now the set in the 0-2. And a fastball is outside. One ball and two strikes. We're all ready again. The one-two pitch. And a breaking ball swung on and missed. And Ixty is out on strikes. But Soro scores a run to get even in the bottom of the first inning. They do it on two hits. And there was one error. Two runners left on base after one inning of play. It's Soro one and Williamsfield one. Chris Cobar, the leadoff hitter for Williams Field in the second inning, and he takes high for ball one. And a ball hit on the ground to the right side, and that's through and into right field. 
Magusas did everything he could, but uh, could not get to it. And Kobar singles to start the Blackhawks' second inning. Austin Poole on to run at first base for Kobar. He's on as a courtesy runner. Now Brandon Amenta. And he takes the first one high for ball one. Williams Field got a run on an RBI single from Jackson Fagg in the first inning. Saguaro scored on an RBI infield single from Brett Adams in the bottom of the first. And that went over for a strike, and it's 1-1. One and one. Stephen Gifford 1-0 and on the season for Saguaro, a 5.09 earned run average, making his fifth appearance as the pitch fouled off 1-2. and two. He's thrown 11 innings, allowed 11 hits, 7 walks, and 10 strikeouts. And the 1-2 pitch and a breaking ball. That's outside and high, 2-2. Two and two. Jake Willock next for Williams Field. And Gifford with the 2-2. Two -two. On the inside corner, a cold third strike. That meant to start it and stopped, and then thought that that one came in on the hands a little too much. But a called third strike, and uh, Amenta retired for the first down. It's the first strikeout for Stephen Gifford, and the batter is Jake Willock. And Willock going after the first one, fouls it off. One on one out top of the second inning. The one strike pitch. The runner goes and a fly ball into left field. Bloom coming in. He's under it and he makes the catch for out number two. Well, luck flies out for the second out in the Williams Field second inning. And the batter is Dallin Milius. Gifford, easy throw to first base, and Poole is back standing. Again, Williams Field went 2-2 two and two in Poole play. That's the pitch to Milius Silver for a strike. The 0-1 is high, one ball and one strike. The 1-1 one, one with the runner going, a pop-up in the infield. Lagusis, a couple of steps to the right of the bag at second. And he's got it to retire the side. A leadoff single for Williams Field. Runner left at first base, and after an inning and a half, it's still Williams Field 1 and Saguaro 1. Here we go to the bottom of the second inning for the Sabercats. Michael Bloom leads off. Bloom, Jeffries, and Nettleton for Saguaro in the second. And they face a new Williams Field pitcher as Travis Rowe goes just the first inning. There's a ground ball out to short. And on to first base, and the leadoff hitter retired as Bloom grounds out 6-3. to three. Cole Vanda, the new pitcher for Williams Field, and I think uh, making his first appearance of the season. First pitch to Jack Jeffries is low for ball one. I was talking about this uh, earlier today in the uh, other game that uh, we covered. We had uh, number 11 IMG and number 6 Bradshaw Mountain. 
And you get teams playing now in the third day of the tournament as that pitch is over for a strike. Williamsfield playing their sixth game in three days. Samaro playing their fifth. The next one outside, and it's three and one. And so it's going to be a battle of wills as far as uh, pitching staffs go here to try to find somebody that can chew up some innings. As Jeffries walks, one on and one out for JT Nettleton. And it's kind of the middle innings that are tough because you'll find, especially at the high school level, you get uh, a close ball game and some of those uh, middle infielders and corner infielders, things like that, guys that don't normally pitch, all of a sudden uh, they can find an inning or two. First one to Nettleton, misses for ball one. One on, one out, bottom of the second inning. Samaro and Williamsfield tied at one. And in talking with uh, Coach Lusner just for a minute before the ball game, he said that's uh, kind of what happened yesterday. They just uh, you know, had to go through a lot of the bullpen and uh, had a couple high scoring games and Lost uh, both by one run. I think it was 12-11 and 8-7, something like that. Maybe 9-8, but high scoring. And just caused you to go through some pitching as Nettleton tries to bunt his way on and bunts it to the backstop. Heads up, heads up, heads up. One and two on Nettleton with Jeffries aboard at first base and one out. And that pitch. Over for a strike. Well, I had that as a one two pitch, but uh, I guess that's strike two. Thought there was a pitch on the corner for a strike and then a ball bunted foul. But that's one of the things about it here at uh, Gene Autry, no scoreboard, so I'm not able to take a look every once in a while as that ball's off the glove of the catcher, Cobar, and it'll go almost to the backstop at a big turnaround second base for Jack Jeffries, a wild pitch. And the Sabercats get a runner to scoring position as we get to stop it. And it's actually, it's not Cobar, I got a new catcher in there. So Williamsfield moving some guys around here. Saw Cobar hit that uh, ground ball into right field. And when he came off the field, he was kind of hobbling going back into the Blackhawk dugout. And that ball hit on the uh, line and into right field for a base hit. Jeffrey's going to be held at third base. And it's a single for J.T. Nettleton. Sabercats put runners at the corners with one out for Ben Lagusis. A big jump at first base for Nettleton, and he steals the base. Lagusis takes a pitch maybe down the middle for a strike, but he saw that uh, there was a big jump over there at first. Might as well let him get into scoring position. Ooh, now that one uh, called strike. Nothing in two on Ben Lagusis, who had an infield single and scored his first time up. Takes a fastball inside, and it's one and two. Lagus is hitting 385 with a couple of RBI coming into today's game. So that uh, infield hit bumps up his average sum. Yeah, the next one misses, and it's two and two. Jeffries at third, Nettleton at second, one out at the bottom of the second, 1-1 one, one score. And that ball out into right field, and it drops for a base hit. And a couple of runners are going to come in. A two-run single for Ben Lagusis as Jeffries and Nettleton score, and it's 3-1 Saguaro. 
Again, Ben Lagusis has been a big boost for the Sabercats offense in the last several games. Now two for two today, two RBI and a run scored. Now Shane Stansbury. And a pitch over for a strike. Stansbury hitting 212, two doubles, a triple, and five RBI. And that went over for a strike, and it's 0 and 2. And the runner goes, the pitch over for strike three. So Stansbury called out on strikes. For the second out, Lagusas steals second, and now he's in scoring position for Turner Lace. Lace has seen his average jump up a bunch during this Cleats Classic, up to a 389 average with two doubles and 12 knocked in. And he takes a fastball on the outside corner, strike one. Check of the runner at second base and the one strike pitch. And that's over for a strike. And it's 0-2. Pitch misses outside, one and two. Late trying to for second base, so we're leading three to one in the bottom of the second. And the pitch fouled out of play. If you look at it from a Williams Field standpoint, Blackhawks figure they're going to keep swinging hot bats, so they're not necessarily worried about Getting down a couple of runs here early. They've got a potent lineup. And the pitch outside, and it's two and two. Might have been high as well. Brad Adams in the on deck circle for the Sabercats. We'll look back to second base, and the two two. Now the runner going, the pitch is a ball. And that one looked a lot better than the one before as Lagusas is still in second and now third base. And the count three and two on Lace. The three, two pitch. And Lace spoils that one as he knocks it out of play. Lagusas at third base with two outs. Pitch number eight of the at-bat coming up to Lace. And a swing and a miss to strike out. And the inning is over, but Saguaro gets the lead as they score twice on two hits, and they leave one after two innings of play at Saguaro three and Williams field. Top of the order for Williams field in the third inning. Brady Alexander takes ball one from Gifford. And the next one misses 2-0. Oh. Chet Fag, Skyler Wingert follow. That one at the knees, a strike, and it's 2-1. and one. Alexander flat out to Bloom his first time up. Two and one on Alexander. Gifford ready. And got in on the hands there, and that one's fouled off. And it's two balls and two strikes. We've got uh, some updated stats for Williams Field. I don't know that they're uh, completely current, but uh, within a game or two anyway, and it gives you an idea where they sit. 
as that one has popped up in foul territory. Adams coming over and just out of his reach. And we stay at two and two, but Alexander batting 289 with a double and two triples and two RBI. The winner of this game will face the winner of number 11 IMG and number three Tucson. That game going on right beside us. And another one fouled off. Have not received a report on the other early game, which was number 12 Victor Valley facing number five Desert Ridge. The winner of that game faces number four Marcos Deniza, and that being uh, played over at Red Mountain Complex. Fly ball out to right center field, and Eichste runs under it. And he makes the catch for the first out. So one away in the Blackhawks' third inning. And the batter is Jed Fagg. Fagg with a single and a run scored his first time up. At last check, a 282 hitter with a double and four RBI. And he takes a fastball for strike one. He didn't like the call there as he steps out. Williams Field trailing Saguaro 3-1 to one as we play in the top of the third inning. The one strike pitch. And a breaking ball just off the outside corner and it's 1-1. One and one. The 1-1 one, one hit on the ground over to third. Stansbury has it on to Mara at first base. And that's the second out. Skyler Wingert. Oh, I beg your pardon. It's the uh, part of the change here is uh, Cole Vandehead's batting for Williams Field. So he hits in place of Wingert. Yeah, next one from Gifford outside. Swing and a foul ball as that one goes to the backstop. Two outs, bases empty in the top of the third. Gifford shaking off a sign from Adams, now ready. And it's popped up down the first baseline in foul territory. Mara and Nettleton both give chase, but neither one can get to it. Jackson Fagg next for Williams Field. And a swing and a foul tip, and uh, that'll do it. A three up, three down inning for the Blackhawks. Middle of the third from Gene Autry Park in Mesa. Williams Field trails Saguaro three to one. And we start the Bottom of the third inning, Brett Adams going after the first pitch and a sharp single to left field. Adams with his second hit, came in batting 419 with eight doubles, and he got his seventh RBI of the season in the first inning on that infield base hit. Adams aboard at first base for Matt Mara. Matt walked his first time up. Entered the ball game batting 360 with a double and a home run. And 
the first pitch is low for ball one. Three to one, Saguaro and a chance for the Sabercats to add on with the leadoff hitter aboard as the throw goes to first base. First one, or the next one rather, to Mara High for a ball, 2-0. Oh. The 2-0. Oh. Near the outside corner, a strike, and it's 2-1. and one. One misses three and one. Look, Ronnie running at first base again for Adams. Yeah, that pitch a called strike. And it's three and two. Sabercat fans thinking that last one might have been a little bit low. <laughs> and the ground ball to short. Trouble here. The out at second base and the throw on to first. And Mara hits into a 6-4-3 double play. Ixty takes high for ball one. Ixty batting 222, a double and three RBI. And a ground ball to second. Amenta has it, and that's on to first base, and the side retired. Sabercats get a leadoff hit, but a double play erases the runner, and after three, they lead three to one. Middle third of the order for Williams Field in the fourth inning. Jackson Fang leads off and takes inside for ball one. Pitch low and it's two and zero. Oh. Williams field with a run in the top of the first inning. Saguaro scored one in the bottom of the first and then two in the second, and they lead three to one as we play in the fourth. That ball fouled off. Sounded like it bounced off the plate and then it came up and hit fag. Two one pitch. That's high. Three and one. It's a quarterfinal matchup in the Cleats Classic Invitational. And the pitch inside, and it's ball four. Now leadoff walk for the Blackhawks, and the batter is Connor Mathers. strike and a breaking ball is high to Mathers who hit into a 4-6-3 double play his first time up batting 480 with six doubles and a home run eight RBI and that ball hit into right field and that's in for a base hit and the first two aboard for the Blackhawks in the fourth inning Dad it off and it on the 
And we'll see what happens here for Williamsfield with the first two aboard. Hitting in the top of the fourth inning, down three to one. Will they try to bunt the runners up here? And they do try to bunt, and it's bunted foul for strike one. Kirby Reddy is Gifford bent at the waist, sets and delivers. The bunt on again, and the pitch is high. It's one and one. The set, the one one. The bunt off, and pitch is high and away, two and one. Set of the pitch, the bunt back on, and it's bunted through for strike two. First two aboard in the Williams Field fourth inning. They're down three to one. And Gifford with the two two. That one just misses, and the count's three and two. And a pitch near the inside corner, a call third strike. Make that be a strike. And the first down recorded. And the, uh, and the batter is Brandon Amenta. Amenta called out on strikes his first time up, was hitting 378 with a couple of doubles, two triples, and a home run. And takes the first one high for ball one. Well, for Gifford, a walk and a single to start the inning, but now a strikeout, and he's a ground ball away from getting out of the inning. The 1-0. High balls and no strikes. The 2-0. And a swing and a miss. Maybe a little help there. It uh, looked like that might have been up out of the strike zone. Two and one on Amenta. And the two one. And the pitch fouled off. Two balls and two strikes. Two, and a swing and a miss. So Gifford comes back. Now back-to-back -back strikeouts in the fourth inning. Fourth strikeout of the ball game for Stephen Gifford, and he'll face Austin Poole, who bats for the first time. Poole just one for four on the season. And a pop up. And Adams somehow makes the catch. He lays out and makes the grab, rolling up over on his shoulder and puts it away in foul territory. Play of the tournament right there that I've seen. And it ends the inning for Williamsfield. No runs, one hit, a walk, two left. Middle of the ball game, Williamsfield trails. Saguaro, three to one. Seven, eight, and nine for Sawar with the bottom of the fourth inning. Michael Bloom takes strike one. And the next one bounced in, and it's one and one. Bloom, Jeffries, and Nettleton for the Sabercats in the bottom of the fourth. The one, one. That's outside. Two balls and a strike. Bloom grounded out his first time up, hitting 4-12 on the season. 
Coming into today's play, five doubles, a triple, and an eight RBI, and that one's fouled out of play on the first base side, and it's two and two. A swing and a miss as Bloom strikes out. First down in the fourth inning, and the batter is Jack Jeffries. Jeffries came in batting 130 on the year with an RBI, walked and scored his first time up. And next one misses, and it's 2-0. and And a pitch over for a strike, and it's 2-1. and one. The 2 1 fouled off, and it's two balls and two strikes. One out, base is empty, home half of the fourth inning. Sora leading Williams Field 3 to 1, and the winner will advance to face the winner of number 3 Tucson and number 11 IMG Academy. And Jeffries goes around, sure enough. Tried to check his swing, but on the appeal, he's rung up and uh, did look like he went around from back here. So two away in the inning. And the batter, J.T. Nettleton. Williams Field with their single run in the first inning. Saguaro scored one to get even in the bottom of the first, and then they added two in the bottom of the second. 3-1 our score. JT Nettleton hitting 281 with a double and a triple, three RBI. That was coming into today's play, and he singled, stole a base, and scored in the second inning. Takes the next one low and outside, 2-0. Two-0 pitch. And a fly ball hit well down the left field line. Long run for Jackson Fagg to the fence, and he can't get to it. It's up against the fence, and Nettleton on his way to third base. He'll pull in a stand-up triple. Well, it's a home run in uh, any high school park, but here at the... Uh, former spring training complex, the minor league complex for the Anaheim Angels. They've still got the major league dimension set up here, 365 down the lines, 420 into center field. And the ball went about 360, I think, down the left field line. So Nettleton at third with two outs and the batter, Ben Lagusis. And Ben takes inside for ball one. He had an infield single and scored in the first, then a two-run single. And a couple of stolen bases in the second. And the runner comes and out at the plate is the call. And uh, Sabercats missed a sign there. Looks like the tag was a little bit high, but Nettleton uh, is called out at the plate. And Sawara does not score after four innings of play. It's three to one. Nine, one, and two for Williams Field in the fifth inning, and some changes to tell you about. First, for Williams Field, Jake Vaught is in as a pinch hitter. Vaught takes the first pitch high for a ball, and takes pitch two high. So two balls and no strikes.
2-0, the count on Vaught. The uh, other change is Shane Stansbury now on to pitch for the Sabercats, and Wyatt Fortney is in at third base. Fastball is high, and it's 3-0. Stansbury has just thrown two-thirds of an innings, of an inning, rather, and it's a four-pitch walk. So Vaught walks. No record, no earned run average for Stansbury. Vaughn aboard at first base for Brady Alexander. And Stansbury starts him off with a strike near the outside corner. Alexander 0 for 2, a fly out in the first, a fly out again in the third. Oh, that's back up the middle and off of Stansbury, and that'll be uh, trouble, and that'll be an infield base hit. Now the question is if uh, Stansbury's okay, they'll check on, on him. We play in the fifth, it's 3-1. to one. Jed Fagg at the plate for Williams Field as he fouls the first one off as Stansbury stays in the ball game for the Sabercats. And break your ball, it's high. Two aboard, nobody out in the top of the fifth inning. And a ball hit back up the middle and into center field, a base hit. Vaughn going to be waved around. Eigstee's throw to the plate. And Adams not able to hang on to it, safe at the plate to call. Vaughn scores to make it 3-2. to two. Alexander goes to third. And as the throw goes to the plate, Fag goes to second base. Time called again from the Saguaro dugout. A run in for Williams Field. They trail 3-2. to two. Well, the pitching change for the Sabercats. As Tommy Jenke is on the pitch. And the first pitch low for ball one. Second and third, nobody out. A run in for Williams Field in the fifth. And the ball bounced in, and it's 2-0. and oh. Stansbury left by way of an injury, so because of uh, being hit by that uh, line drive from Alexander, they allow him to leave because of injury, and that gave Jenke extra time to get loose. And trying to bunt, bunts through. And uh, I guess got just a piece of it, so it's called a foul ball. Showing Bunn again. And uh, Benny trying to slash there, and it's a foul ball. It's two and two. Jackson Fagg in the on deck circle for the Blackhawks. The 2 2. That bounces in, and that'll get the run in, and Williams Field ties it here in the fifth inning. Fag goes to third on the play. Two runs in for the Blackhawks in the fifth, and it's a 3-3 game, and now they'll go ahead and run 90 feet away for Williams Field. Three two is high, and that's ball four as the Sabercats brought the infield in. 
Still nobody out. And the batter Jackson Fag with runners at first and third. Here's Janky with the set. And the ball fouled off for a strike one. Janky, no record. A 1.5 earned run average, making his third appearance. He's thrown four and two thirds innings for the Sabercats, allowing seven hits. That's the first walk he's allowed. He's recorded three strikeouts. And a swing and a miss on an off speed pitch, and it's 0 2. Nobody out for the Blackhawks trying to push across the go-ahead run as the next one is inside and it's one and two. Connor Mathers next for Williamsfield. It's a quarterfinal game in the Cleats Classic Invitational. Runner from first goes, the pitch is inside, no play at second, so a 2-2 two -two count as the uh, stolen base is successful. Now two in scoring position. The 2-2. And a swing and a foul ball. Into shallow right field coming in. Nelson with the catcher on attacks and the throw nowhere close. That's going to go all the way to the backstop. Nettleton tried to uncork one there, but uh, overthrew everything. It's a sacrifice fly off the bat of Jackson Fang. It's a three run fifth inning for Williamsfield, and the Blackhawks lead four to three. First out of the inning, a runner still now at third base as uh, Banahe tagged and uh, moved up from second to third. And a swing and a miss for Connor Mathers. He bats with a drawn in infield. His team leading now four to three in the top of the fifth. And that's a sharp base hit into right field. That'll bring the run in. So Manders with his second base hit. A four-run fifth inning for Williams Field to make it 5-3. to three. And a pinch runner at first base as Brady Ahern runs. Runner at first base and one out, four runs in for Williams Field on the top of the fifth inning. They've turned a 3-1 deficit into a 5-3 lead. And the winner of this one will advance to play in the semifinals tomorrow at 4 o'clock. They'll face the winner of number three, Tucson, and number 11, IMG. That game going on next to us. The loser of this game will play the loser of that game in the consolation bracket. Turn and a throw to first base, and Aaron back. Not a bad idea there for Saguaro. Figuring you go to a pinch runner, and you're probably going to ask him to take off here early in the count. And a breaking ball over for a strike. The 0-1. And a line drive, and that's a base hit into left field. Now two aboard with one out for 
Brandon Amenta. And another runner coming on for Williams Field. Chris Quackenbush will run at first base and now a timeout from uh, the Sorrell dugout. In the fifth, it's 5-3. Another pitching change for the Sabercats. Steven Wright on the pitch. A ground ball into the hole at short. Lace able to knock it down, but that's it. And a base hit. Loads the bases for Williams Field with one out in the fifth inning. The batter, Austin Poole. Jack Kraft is in the ball game as well for Saguaro as he takes over at third base. And a break your ball. That one just misses for a ball. 5-3 Williams Field as they hit in the fifth. And a fastball on the outside corner, a strike. It's one and one. Yeah. And ball hits into a center field, down for a hit. One run will score. Here comes the throw to the plate. And out at the plate. Boy, a big throw from Luke Eichste in center field, a throw out. Kirby trying to score, actually his uh, courtesy runner. But give Austin Poole an RBI single. And the runner thrown out at the plate for the second out. So a run in, it's now a five run fifth inning for Williams Field to make it 6-3. And runners at second and third with two away for Jake Vaught, who started the inning with a walk. Oh, that first one a called strike. Vaught walked on four pitches to start the fifth. And right steps off. The 1 0. It's outside, two balls and no strikes. The 2-0. And Wright snaps a breaking ball over the outside corner of a strike. And a swing and a miss. And that'll do it. It was actually a 1-2 pitch. And Vaughn strikes out. Ten to the plate for Williams Field in the fifth inning. They score five times, and we go to the bottom of the fifth. It's 6-3 Blackhawks. Ben Lagusis leads off for Saguaro in the bottom of the fifth inning and takes ball one. It's the top of the order for the Sabercats in the fifth, and they've got some work to do. And as now it's fouled off, and it's one and one. One low, two and one. Lagusa is with a single in the first and a single in the second. Next one inside, three and one.
And that one not close for ball four. Well, then he's thrown three innings, allowed two runs on four hits. And that's his second walk, and we'll get a timeout from the Williams Field dugout playing in the bottom of the fifth. Sabercats batting trailing six to three. Field goes to the bullpen again in the bottom of the fifth inning. Jake Tully is on to pitch. And his first pitch is outside for ball one to Jack Kraft. And Kraft fouls one off, and the count goes to one and one. Tully 0 and 1 in the season, a 3 6 2 earned run average. Nine and two thirds innings pitch, 10 hits allowed, seven walks, eight strikeouts. Runner goes, and the ball hit into center field. And the catch made. So Kraft flies out. And the batter will be Turner Lace. One on, one out, bottom of the fifth inning. Sororo trailing Williams Field, six to three. High for ball one to Turner Lace. The 1 0. Yeah, yeah, and Lace trying to bunt his way on, bunts through it for a strike, and it's 1 and 1. Lace a ground out and a strikeout in two at bats. Trying to move that runner along. And a throw to first, and Lagoose is back. Ben's got a couple of stolen bases, but with Zoro down three runs, I don't know if uh, they're going to let him take off here. Lace takes on the inside corner a strike, and it's one and two. Breaking ball, and that's hit uh, into shallow right field. And down for the hit, and they're going to get Lagusas at second base. I don't know if he didn't see that ball. I know he's got to kind of hang tight in case the ball is caught, but you got to get a better read than that. And instead, he is forced at second base for the second out. And it's a fielder's choice for Lace. Now Adams with a ground ball, knocked down by Poole. He recovers and throws the first base, and that is in time to retire the side. Tully comes in and retires the Sabercats, and after five, Williams Field still leads to Warrell, six to three. And the ground ball begins the sixth inning. Brady Alexander grounds out. Four to three. And the batter is Jed Fag. Ground ball fielded over at third base, and they throw on to first in time. A 
5-3 ground down, and there's two away in the sixth. They pitch inside. Four ball one. Jake Tully batting for the first time. Takes outside and it's 2-0. Oh. <laughs> Two outs, bases empty, top of the sixth. And pitch misses. The winner advances to the semifinals tomorrow afternoon at 4 o'clock. As the pitch is over for a strike, and it's 3 and 1. And the 3 1 pitch. And a ground ball over to Mare at first base. He'll take it himself, and a tap of the bag will end the inning. Right gets a 3 up, 3 down inning. And we go to the bottom of the sixth. Saguaro trailing Williams Field 6 to 3. Matt Maris starts things off for Saguaro on a fly ball into center field. Alexander there. One pitch and one out. Thanks, Steve, for the Sabercats. Strikeout and a ground out on his two at-bats. And a breaking ball outside for ball one. Next one a little bit high, 2-0. The 2-0 pitch. It's inside and low, 3-0. And, oh. The 3-0 pitch. Okay, and that's at the knees of strike, and it's 3-1. and one. Michael Bloom next for the Sabercats. The 3-1 pitch. And that's over for a strike, and it's 3-2. And, and that's inside for ball four. So Ixty walks. for the Sabercats in the sixth. The runner goes, the pitch high, the throw to second base is late. Still on base. On one of the other quarterfinals next to us, Notre Dame trailing, uh, was trailing Desert Mountain four to Three going into the seventh inning, and the Saints have scored three times in the top of the seventh and lead six to four. Runner at second base and one out. And the Sabercats get a runner into scoring position with one out and now looking to at least get one. Like to put up a crooked number, but uh, at least get one year, which will give him a better chance in the seventh. Oh, Runner going, and the ball popped up. This one back behind home plate. And caught for the second out.
Still two away with a runner at second base. And Stephen Gifford will enter and bat for the Sabercats. Pitch high for ball one. And the 1-0 pitch. And a swing and a miss, and it's one and one. And now time called. The 1-1 pitch, and a ground ball over to first. Mathers scoops it up, and a tap of the bag ends the inning. Sabercats get a one-out walk. Runner stranded at second base through six. The Sabercats trail Williams Field by a score of six to three. Jackson Fang, the leadoff hitter for the Blackhawks in the seventh. First one on the ball, the next one fouled out of play. And the count one and one. New pitcher in the ball game for Sawaro as Hank Burquist will try to work his way through the seventh inning. The one one. And that's a called strike and it's one and two. The one and the one two. And then a breaking ball, it's high, two and two. And the ground ball over to the right side. That's grabbed there at second, on to first. And the leadoff hitter retired in the top of the seventh inning. Magusas. Throws out Jackson Fang, and with one out, the batter is Connor Mathers. And the first pitch to Mathers over for a strike. Mathers hit into a 4-6-3 double play his first time up. Since then, a couple of base hits. Takes that one for a ball. It's one and one. And a fly ball lifted into left center field. And that's put away. I think that might be Bloom in left field still, and uh, he's got it for the second out. And yeah, we look ahead to the Saguaro seventh inning. They'll send up nine, one, and two in the order. And they'll be looking for at least three runs as they trail six to three. First one to Kirby, misses for a ball. over for a strike and it's one and one. On the handle into shallow left and this will drop for a base hit. Lace the shortstop did everything he could. And Bloom playing deep enough there that he had to come charging in. And actually, uh, well, it might be Gifford and left. But uh, anyway, the uh, runner safe aboard at first base with a base hit, and now uh, two outs. And the batter, Brandon Amenta. And a 
Ground ball down the third baseline. That's picked up and a throw on the run. Pulls Mara off the bag. Infield single. As uh, Kraft came charging in, threw it on the run, and even a good throw. I don't know for sure that they get him over there. Austin Poole takes ball one. And a pop up, and this will get back in out of play. One ball, one strike on Austin Poole. Williamsfield trying to add on to the seventh, so we're trying to hold him in check. Pitch a strike, and it's one and two. The one two pitch, and a breaking ball over for a called third strike. And that does it for Williamsfield. No runs, a couple of hits. They leave two. We go to the bottom of the seventh, and Williamsfield leads Saguaro six to three. 9 1 and 2 for Sawaro in the bottom of the seventh inning in the first pitch over for a strike from Jake Tully. The 0 1. And that's outside. One ball and one strike. Sabercats need a couple of base runners to get the tying run to the plate in the seventh. JT Nettleton with a single and a triple and two at bats. The 1 1. And he's hit by the pitch, and that'll be a base runner. Well, so Warren will take a base runner any way they can get him here as uh, they get uh, the leadoff guy aboard. And they'll turn the order over for Ben Lagusis. Williams Field with a run in the first inning. They scored five times in the fifth. So Warren got one in the bottom of the first and two in the bottom of the second. First pitch to Ben Lagusis high for ball one. And Lagusis with one out to uh, center field, and it's caught out there and a chance to double up the runner. And uh, boy, a base running error there as Nettleton. Just couldn't find it, and it's a fly ball and a double play as Lagusas flies out, and Nettleton is doubled up 9-3. And just like that, the Sabercats are down to their final out. And the first pitch to Jack Kraft over for a strike. Breaking ball over for strike two. The 0 2 pitch. Bounced in. One and two. Tully trying to finish it. The 1 2 pitch. And a swing and a miss. And Kraft strikes out. And that's the ball game as Saguaro falls to Williamsfield by a final score of 6-3. to three. And the totals on the ball game for Williamsfield, six runs on 12 base hits. They commit one error. And they leave eight runners on base. For Saguaro, they score three times. They do it on six base hits. The Sabercats are error-free today and they leave five runners on base. And so with the win, Williamsfield advances into the semifinals in the Cleats Classic Invitational. They will face the winner of number three seed Tucson and number 11 seed IMG. And Sawar will face the loser of that game 
in the consolation semifinals tomorrow afternoon. So that'll do it. Again, our final score, it's Williams Field 6 and Saguaro 3 from Gene Autry Park in Mesa. Todd Garbison for Southwest Sports Network saying so long. We'll talk to you tomorrow.